Hey everybody, uh, today we are painting this awesome cast that I got from the Caproni Collection. They are an incredible company and I actually just got three casts from them very recently. And in fact, if you haven't seen that video, click right above uh, and go check out uh, my unboxing video. We're painting this cast and today I'm going to give you seven tips for painting realism. Uh, specifically details and how to render. Make sure you subscribe and like and comment. Uh, I'd love to hear what other videos you guys would like to see and I want to know if you learned something from this. So please comment down below and like and subscribe because I plan to do these every single week uh, and so I hope you're learning something. If you make it to the end of the video, you are much more likely to succeed as a realist representational painter. Okay, so don't skip ahead. Let's paint. Tip number one, make sure that you have established the larger masses, the big shapes, uh, and you've got an organized structure to whatever you're painting. So in this case, I've got the hand, right? I've got the lights, the half tones, the core shadow, the form shadow, and the cast shadow. So I have all of those parts now, I need to make sure that I'm staying organized and I've established those major masses before I even think about rendering any details within those shapes. So the details that you will be rendering, like all the small textures, maybe like the wrinkles on a finger or the knuckle or the fingernail, you don't need to worry about those until you have the big masses in place because those details will stay within the big mass. So whatever the larger shape is, the detail will be within that value range. In order to make sure that you're staying inside of that range, you need to squint. So by squinting, it tells you if you are moving outside of that range. If I were to be painting, let's say, uh, a knuckle down here, and I made the highlight on a knuckle so bright so that it stands out and it doesn't look like it is on that knuckle, rather it's more like a highlight like this value, well then it would be way too light. It needs to stay within the big shape that I've already established. Number two, use a mirror to gauge your proportions. Again, it is so important not to just put icing on a cake that's unfinished, right? So don't put details on a painting that does not have the integrity of good proportions or a good value structure. So use a mirror and that really helps me uh, especially with proportions. So if your proportions are off, it's not worth doing. I'll hold it up by my eye like this and I'll look at the mirror and flick my eye back and forth between the subject and my painting. It helps me establish more of a certainty in the drawing. If my proportions are off, it is not at all worth putting any of the detail. Tip number three is regarding edges. I'm always asking myself, which is more subtle? Is it the contrast between two shapes on the cast or is it my painting? A good example would be right here. I'm looking at the cast and I'm comparing it to this zone right here. I see that there's a shadow in there, but I've created much more contrast than actually exists on the cast. With the, this edge, I'm thinking of it more as a cylinder. It's round and it's turning quite slow, so it should be softer and I've made this contrast really, really sharp. I'm just going to take my light value and I've, I'm using a very soft synthetic brush and I'm gonna just soften this edge. And it's little things like that that will really create a higher degree of realism, is asking yourself which is more subtle. Edges always relates to what fundamental form that you are painting. So is it more similar to a sphere? Is it rounder? Because that would make it softer. Or is it sharper like a cube, like the edge of a cube, or like the edge of this? How fast is the form turning? That is directly related to what edge quality that you are going to have. Is it going to be hard or is it going to be one of the millions of different kinds of soft edges? Really think about that. So that's tip number three. So tip number four, Squint, squint down and make sure that your value structure and those big masses are correct, okay? Flick your eyes back and forth and really 
like when I say squint, I mean like shut your eyes so far shut that you can only discern light from dark. Because we've developed a bigger picture um, and we've selected areas that are in light and areas that are in more of a half tone and then areas that are in shadow, we have to put the details within those smaller masses. In fact, uh, in The Art Spirit by Robert Henry, he talked about how important the larger structure, those larger masses are compared to those minute details. If you're putting each individual hair on an eyebrow, but the eyebrow is the wrong value, well then each one of those hairs is just a waste of time. The detail is not going to support the painting. It's not going to create that impact. It should read from way across the room and up close if you would like. I can't put anything extraordinarily light inside of this shape right here. I can't go too far over, otherwise it won't retain the integrity of that larger mass. So I'm always thinking about what is its overall value. And if you're not sure what it is, make sure to squint. I'll say that a million times because it is so important. Make sure to squint. Okay, a prime example of this is the thumb right here. So the thumb, part of it is in light, part of it is in shadow. And if I were to take this raw umber, pure raw umber right out of the tube and put it right there to make the crease in the, cr in the uh, nail bed, well, it would be way, way, way too dark. It would have way too much contrast. So rather than grabbing raw umber, I may grab a slightly darker value than what I have there and start just slowly mixing the paint in and making a very, very subtle darker tone on the edge of the nail bed over there. And this actually leads into tip number five. Tip number five, I have all these pre-mixtures and I try to get as close as possible to whatever value I need to apply onto the canvas. But sometimes my guess is just not perfect the first time. So this is what I do. I mix on the canvas. So I'm using a very uh, soft synthetic brush, Rosemary & Co. Eclipse Long Comber. Rather than painting a la prima in super thick brush strokes, because my paint is still wet, I can make a very, very subtle change to my shapes by adding a value that's just lighter than this darker value, and I can mix in to the paint that exists on the canvas. And this is kind of a more advanced technique, but I really do think that it can be forgiving if you're just using a very, very small amount of paint. So mixing on the canvas can get those subtle, subtle transitions that you're looking for. Tip number seven, wait until the very end to put your darkest dark in and your lightest light, okay? I don't even have ivory black and pure titanium white on my palette right now. These are pre-mixtures with titanium white and a little bit of cad lemon uh, up to just raw umber. So I'm waiting until the very, very end to put those dark notes in because it forces you to stay limited in your value range, and you can get almost all of the details with just those limited, with that limited value range. But at the very end, then you can extend it two steps. You can put in your lightest light and your darkest dark. Those darkest darks are going to go in the crevices, those dark accents, and by doing that, it gives you a broader range. So you're, you're waiting until the very end and you're using up that value range that you've given yourself, uh, you've uh, restrained yourself to just using those that limited value range, and you can get a ton of detail in with just that value range, but at the very end, then you can choose where that darkest dark and that lightest light is. So pure titanium white is going to be in the highlight on the edge of this arm. I'm going to wait until the very, very end. By waiting until the very end, you can choose where the viewer is going to look. So if I want them to really look at a point of high contrast, I'll put a light next to a dark, 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 right? So it's good to wait until the very end. 
Now my last tip, if you're still here, congratulations. I think you are much more likely to succeed in realism and uh, painting representationally. And here's why. My last tip is be patient. So if you were patient and you listened to all these tips and you made it to the end, congratulations. If you haven't, go back, re-listen, get to this point. Being patient is absolutely essential in painting details and realism. You can throw something together quick and get really close or close enough, but you know that? That's cool, but I, I want to go beyond that. And artists who take the time to literally take months and even years at some points, create something that is absolutely incredible. If you're patient, you can accomplish anything. That is such an essential skill, a skill that you can learn. You're not born with it. Um, just like the ability to paint, you just have to practice. That's it. I know artists who have waited years to complete paintings. And when you are patient with yourself, you give yourself the opportunity to improve. I truly believe that, and I know it from experience. If I just don't frustrate myself and try to get everything done all at once, when you're working on something, give yourself enough time to achieve the level of detail that you're looking for. It takes a long time. It could take hundreds of hours. And if you want to make something look like something, sometimes it takes that much time. So be patient with yourself.